In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to come together in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness, and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. You are invited to kneel as you can. Together we confess, Almighty God, God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We rise for our intro to the day. How great are your works, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands I sing for joy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. How great are your works, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. Wicked, O wicked 
one who shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn away from his way, that wicked person shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn away from his way, and he does not turn away from his way, that person shall die in his iniquity, but you will have delivered your soul. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We respond to our reading with our graduate. Fear the Lord, you his saints. For those who fear him lack nothing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. The second reading is from Romans chapter 13. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to con good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Do, on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For the same reason, you also pay taxes. For the authorities are ministers of God attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them. Taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. Owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. chapter of Matthew, beginning at the first verse, Glory to you, O Lord. At that time the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me, but whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and be drowned into the depths of the sea. Woe to the world for temptations to sin, for it is necessary that temptations come, but woe to the one by whom the temptation comes. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands or two feet be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep, and one of them has gone astray. Does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. 
So it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you've gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. And where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, maker, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. joining us for our service today. It's nice to have you here. And being Labor Day weekend, it's fitting that not only should we have some rest and relaxation and some respite, but that we should also consider the importance of labor and why work is so important. We begin by considering God's labor and God's work. Psalm 92, which forms the basis of today's intro and also the text, says this, How great are your works, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. You know, all creation gives testimony to the handiwork of God, and living here in God's beautiful north country, it's wonderful to see the mountains and the trees and the lakes and everything that God has made for us to enjoy. In fact, God reflected upon his handiwork on the sixth day of creation, and we read about that in Genesis chapter 1, verse 21. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And it was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. What a marvelous thing it is that God has created this world. He makes the sun to shine in the sky to give us light and also to give us warmth, and the moon at night so that we might have um, a reflection in the sky, but also so that we might have it there uh, as we sleep. God's creation is a wonderful thing, 
And what's also wonderful is that God gives us a new creation through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Which brings me to, to this. You may have been wondering what this is down here. It is, of course, a pizza box. Now, I'd like to think of the last time that you ordered one of these and you had a choice. And on the side of the box here, it says you can order extra cheese, sausage, meatball, mushrooms, peppers, or you can just order the whole shebang together and they call it the works. And if you have the works, you pretty much have everything, I guess, that you need, right? I remember growing up in New Jersey, Karen grew up near me in New Jersey too, there was Caldwell Pizzeria, and at Caldwell Pizzeria there was a poster, and on that poster it talked about pizza being the perfect food, and how it covered all of the major food groups. Well, I'm not sure if that had a nutritionist um, imprint on it or not, but I do remember picking up the pizza boxes and it said on top, um, you tried the rest now. Try the best. Try the best. But all the pizzerias seem to have the same kinds of boxes that say the same kind of things. And it reminds me of those t-shirts that you see, World's Best Grandpa. And, and I know I've seen a few of them on different grandpas. So um, World's Best Grandpa, that's a lot of grandpas. Um, that would be a lot of different worlds. But the good news is that we live in this world that God created for you and for me. And God loved this world so much that he did something amazing. And we hear about that in John 3, 16 to 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Jesus was the one perfect sacrifice for our sins. You know, in days of old, people would make numerous sacrifices for sins, but in Jesus, um, he completed all of the work that needed to be done for salvation. In Jesus, we have the works. We have the Savior in its complete form, uh, the only Savior that you and I need. Um, God created the world, and he makes us a new creation through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Another verse about the works of God that lead us into the works that we're able to do. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. So the Lord has created us, he's recreated us in Jesus Christ, and he has works that he envisions for you and for me. And there are three things that I would like us to consider as we look at the works that God has for you and me to do. Uh, the first is the purpose, then there's the promise, and finally there is the prayer. Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 to 34. Whatever you do, work heartily, as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. Truth be known, I think that most of us have had a job or two that we're not too enamored with, right? Something that we're not thrilled to do. Um, maybe we need to get an extra cup of coffee to motivate us to go out that door in order to do whatever labor lays ahead for you and me. Or, or maybe there's a checklist of things that we're handed that we're supposed to do that maybe for whatever reason we're initially not too excited about. Um, but the Lord encourages us to consider our labor to be done on behalf of Him. Whatever you do, work heartily. Notice not half-heartily, but heartily, for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you'll receive the inheritance as your reward. And we're serving our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And there's a purpose behind it. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. So the Lord wants us to do good. He wants us to do good works, and we're able to do that by grace through faith. And he has good things in store for you and me, good things that he envisions for us as we walk the walk of faith. Matthew 5, verse 16 also reiterates this. In the same way, let your light, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. No one wants to work next to a coworker who complains all the time. I mean, I think that many people complain on occasion, right? But to complain all of the time about the job that you have, 
Um, what's really the point in that? It's not encouraging, it's not inspiring, and if by doing the works that we do we're supposed to glorify Christ, we're not doing that if we're always complaining. Um, instead, we can give witness to the hope that we have in us by doing our best, applying ourselves, and letting our light shine before others. So that's the purpose of work that the Lord envisions for you and me as his saved, redeemed people. There's also a promise that he gives to us. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. Commit your works to the Lord, and your plans will be established. So if we commit our work to the Lord, what will happen to our plans, Karen? They will be established. They will be established. They'll be established. And that's a promise that the Lord gives to you and me. So commit yourself resolutely to serving Christ through the things that you do, and the Lord promises that he will bless it. And finally, there is a prayer for all of us who labor, for all of us who work and work hard, for all of us who today are enjoying a rest from that labor. Psalm 90 verse 17 says this, Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. May the Lord indeed look upon favor with our labor, and may he richly bless it for the sake of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, dear friends, amen, and happy Labor Day weekend. We'd like to thank everyone for their generous offerings to this ministry, both made through mail and also through e-giving. Uh, we will be open on Sunday mornings for corporate worship beginning next Sunday. Uh, Pre-registration is required as seating is limited. Uh, please call the church office at 518-792-7971. Uh, the earlier in the week, the better. We now present our gifts before the altar of our Lord and Savior, who loves us so much, who created the world for us to enjoy, and made us a new creation in Jesus Christ. <laughs>
comfort for our friends in mourning, the families of Mona Pratt and Tom Ryan. We pray for protection on our friends serving in the military, including John, Jerry, Ashley, Joshua, Heather, Trevor, Leslie, and Dawson. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We joyfully sing our closing hymn. <laughs> Baby. 